So the first thing we're going to do for task two, step one, is create a two and a half dimensional raster backdrop based on something loosely related to what's called the Swiss Hillshade method. And what we're going to do here is create the ground in terms of a figure ground relationship. So to do that, I'll first turn off the points in the roads. We're going to focus on our DEM. And so what you want to first do is make a hill shade of the DEM. So to do that, go to geo processing and you can type in hill shade. And it comes up in the toolboxes. So surface hill shade. And the input raster is going to be the DEM and I'll change the, um, I'll call it Hillshade instead of the default name. I'll run that. And by the way, I just use all the default values. So now what we're going to do is we're going to combine the Hillshade that we just created with the DEM. And first step here is going to be, we're going to change the symbology of the DEM to use a continuous color scheme. And this is something you might want to look back to the color brewer tool I mentioned earlier in the video. And I'm specifically going to use a very light and subdued color to create figure ground separation. I'm going to make those colors less visually prominent. So to do that, I'm going to go to DEM, right click, select symbology. And I'll, I'll take all the defaults and from the selection, I'm going to look for one called elevation 12. Now, of course, feel free to experiment with these different elevation color schemes. There's a lot of them, but this one I liked for when I was preparing this. So we now have this representation of the underlying digital elevation model. And then a little trick we do is we take Hillshade, highlight it as a layer, and then go up here under Appearance, and set its transparency, I tried about 45%. And so what that does for you, the transparency gives you some of the contrast and so forth of the Hillshade, but you still see the underlying colors of the DEM, yet they're subdued. In fact, when you move the map around, you can kind of see how they're drawing together. So that's how we create that background effect. And again, back to the final product, that's how I got the map to look like that. Okay, let's move on now to task two, step two, where we're going to symbolize the points of interest. Now, for both the points of interest and the roads, we're going to use values from the attribute table of these vector feature classes to determine our symbols. If I were to right click on points of interest, go to attribute table, you'll see that we have a column called feature class and we're going to use those values for creating qualitative or nominal data point symbols based on varying different kinds of shapes. So again, this is not numerical information, but we're going to create map symbols that represent the feature class. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to right click and go to symbology, even though it's open just to go through the steps. And I'm going to select unique values in the field I'm going to use is feature class. And you can see I get a default representation that comes right up with the various feature class, basically unique types of feature classes, airports, cemetery, churches, and so forth. Now, I recommend, because these are points of interest, some of them just don't make sense, like this one called census. So if you want, right out of the bat, you can remove certain ones. I removed by right-clicking over the name of it, remove census, crossing,
and valley. You can also remove the all other values. So that kind of pairs it down. Now you can go through and create point symbols for each of these points of interest. The way you can do that is to click on the symbol, double click on the symbol. And the way I did it was I just looked for the name of it. So if this one's an airport, I just typed in the word airport. And I found this symbol. Now repeat this process for all of your point symbols. The process again is to double click on the symbol and search for something that you think will work well. I can't tell you exactly what you should do for every single symbol. That's up to you as the map maker and cartographer, but that's also kind of the fun part of it. Now to save a little time in these videos, um, I actually had some of these already made up before uh, I put the video together. So here's what, here's some suggestions of what you can use for your symbols. Of course, you're welcome to copy what I did, but I encourage you to look into what these symbols look like. And if we start to change back to our reference map scale of one to 20,000, and we put, turn the DEM and the hill shade back on, we can start to get a sense of what these symbols will look like um, based on that reference map scale. Hi, this is Brian Tomaszewski. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, and share this video. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel and clicking the notification icon to stay up to date on new videos from this channel. Thanks for watching.